now, uh, uh, so now last speaker is Valerio Asensa from uh, IMPA. He will speak on the geometry of magnetic and, uh, sorry, I cannot see magnetic flows, no. I guess. Flow, no. okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, so first of all, thank you for the invitation. And uh, today I'm gonna talk about the geometry of magnetic flows. So basically to investigate the magnetic dynamics with a geometrical approach. Uh, first of all, I will try to justify the title of, uh, of the talk. So the motivation uh, is the following. And uh, imagine that on a Riemannian manifold, we have, uh, we have a particle P and, uh, and we know that uh, if we give a first speed to this particle in absence of external force, uh, force field by the Galileo principle, this particle will follow a geodesical motion. And now the idea is that we imagine our particle to be charged and uh, uh, our space endowed with uh, a magnetic interaction. So the Lorentz force uh, uh, act, on, act on the particle by deflecting the trajectory. And in general, a magnetic system, it's exactly the toy model for the motion of uh, the charged particle uh, over a Riemannian manifold endowed with uh, a magnetic force. And the mathematical definition is the following. So a magnetic system uh, is, uh, is the data uh, of m, g, and sigma, where m, g, it's uh, a Riemannian manifold. And for our purpose, it's closed. And sigma, it's a two form, uh, which is closed, and it's called also the magnetic form. So the closeness of sigma emphasizes also the fact that magnetic uh, force are divergency free. And then uh, uh, related with the, with the metric G and, uh, and the two form sigma, we have uh, a bundle operator, omega, which is uh, also the Lorentz operator, which generalizes the Lorentz force in this setting. And again, it's compatible with G and sigma in the following sense. So now if we evaluate the scalar product over omega V and W, we want the equality with the two form. And this uh, for every vector V and W on the tangent bundle. So we can see that in this sense, omega can be understood as skew symmetric, because of course, now if we flip uh, the arguments uh, here, I minus, uh, I minus, I minus uh, one will appear uh, because the sigma it's, it's a two form. And then uh, in, in this setting, uh, the equation for the charged particles, so the Newton equation are given by uh, nabla gamma dot gamma dot equal to omega uh, gamma dot. Uh, of course, uh, nabla is the Levi-Civita Levi connection induced by the metric G. And the first remark that uh, of in, in absence of magnetic interaction, so if omega is equal to zero, of course, we recover the classical equation for standard geodesics. And now a uh, solution of this equation gamma uh, is called a magnetic geodesic. And uh, a very um, a, a first remark is that the the, the energy, uh, which for me is the, is the kinetic energy, is constant along magnetic geodesic. So uh, I will denote by phi of the couple G sigma. This is the magnetic flow, and it's exactly the flow which we obtain by lifting. Oh, sorry by lifting uh, uh, equation, the Newton equation to the tangent band. So in particular, the flow leave invariant the energy level set, sigma s. And, uh, and uh, hereafter, I will denote by, uh, I will denote by uh, uh, phi g sigma uh, s, uh, this is the restriction of the magnetic flow to the level of the energy sigma s. And now just an insight uh, about how the magnetic dynamics uh, uh, act um, uh, on different level of the energy. So by looking the, by looking the Newton equation, we see that the first term is quadratic uh, on the norm of the speed, while the second one is linear. What does it mean this one? So now so, uh, I uh, suppose that this is uh, uh, a classical geodesic, okay? So when I choose big level of the energy, 
uh, I, the, the first term uh, in, in the equation, in the Newton equation is dominant. And then I have to imagine that uh, I'm just perturbing the geodesic flow. So this is uh, satisfied the equation, the Newton equation with uh, uh, big speed. Uh, while uh, for small level uh, of the energy, the linear term is dominant, and then uh, the particles tend to be lured back in a neighborhood of the starting point. And this for, uh, for, uh, for, for small speed. And uh, if you want the, 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 there is a level, a special level of the energy, which is called the magnetic critical value. And in general, depends from the metric and from the two form, which plays a role of interlude between this kind of dynamic. Now, the, the, the question is the following. From a geometrical point of view, uh, I would like to understand how, how the shape of M change under the magnetic action. And the idea is that uh, I, would like to, I would like an object which uh, codify together uh, the Riemannian uh, structure uh, plus uh, terms uh, of uh, perturbation uh, uh, due to uh, the magnetic interaction. And here we have uh, uh, a definition, which is the magnetic curvature. So of course we have to fix a level of the energy because uh, the difference between uh, the classical geodesic uh, case is that when we reparameterize a geodesic, the trajectory is always the same. While in this case, when we choose a, a different starting speed, of course, we jump in another trajectory. So magnetic system change by spacing a different level of the energy. So now we fix a level of the energy and then we consider a section obtained by V and W with V and W orthogonal and unitary. And we define the magnetic curvature of operator at the level S as 2S, uh, the Riemannian curvature operator applied to the section B and W, then minus square root of 2S in uh, terms uh, of derivative of omega with respect to uh, W and V, plus uh, another operator, A omega, which is a suitable operator. And um, a remark is that uh, this definition uh, uh, comes, uh, this definition uh, uh, come. Uh, uh, for, by, by looking uh, uh, the uh, linearized problem, or namely Jacobi equation, uh, as well as uh, the, uh, the second uh, uh, variation uh, of, the, of the action, uh, and this in a variational setting. So as well as in the Riemannian case. And uh, yes, and then once we have uh, 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 this operator, of course we want to codify uh, the, uh, we, we, want, we want to codify geometrical property by looking how the magnetic curvature of this operator act over section of the tangent space. And so we can define the magnetic curvature function. So, the sectional magnetic curvature at the level S is nothing more than uh, the magnetic curvature operator evaluated over a section B and W. The rich magnetic curvature at the level S, here there is a little typo. Oh. The rich magnetic curvature at the level S is uh, the trace of uh, M omega sigma where we fix V. And uh, the scalar magnetic curvature instead uh, is just obtained by integrator over a fiber of the unit sphere bundle, the Ricci magnetic curvature at the level S. A particular case uh, is given in two dimension when, uh, uh, so if, uh, if M is uh, a closed surfaces, uh, 
Uh, then uh, uh, sigma it's uh, on the form b times the volume form where b it's uh, it's a smooth function on the surface it's, which is called also the magnetic uh, the magnetic function and for dimensional reason the sectional magnetic curvature coincide with the rich magnetic curvature in the, the in what we define the gaussian magnetic curvature which takes a very interesting form so the gaussian magnetic curvature it's a 2s the uh, the magnet the, the the gaussian curvature of the surfaces and then we have a linear term on s uh, which is the differential of b uh, applied to uh, i times v and i is just the anticlockwise rotation for an angle pi over two and then we have a quadratic tens b squared and then uh, with this uh, with this definition in one end uh, we we the, the question is when uh, a magnetic system show up a level of the energy which is positively curved in uh, in this new magnetic uh, meaning and uh, basically the answer is given by two important class of example so now the first uh, the first class of example it's it's given by si the by symplectic magnetic system so namely when the two form it's a symplectic and so if the two form is symplectic, there exists a S0 bigger than zero, such that the sectional magnetic curvature are strictly positive for every energy between zero and S0. And uh, uh, in, in a similar way, one can show that instead, if a sigma is nowhere vanishing, namely that sigma p is never zero for every point uh, on the base manifold, we can show that there exists uh, an, an energy as zero, such that the rich magnetic curvature is strictly bigger than zero for every uh, energy between zero and S zero. And so roughly speaking, uh, syntactic magnetic system on, uh, on small energy level play uh, is the magnetic analog of positively curved manifold and the nowhere vanishing magnetic system uh, always on small level of the energy is the magnetic analog of positively rich man, uh, positively rich curve manifold and now we will see some application in particular one application to the existence uh, uh, of closed magnetic geodesic so the question is the following now i give a level of the energy and I want to know if that level of the energy carries a periodic orbit or a closed magnetic geodesic. And the, we, we know so, so far what we know is that when we choose big level of the energy, so namely above the magnetic critical, uh, above the magnetic critical value, the answer, it's, uh, the answer is yes. While uh, for small level of the energy, so below the magnetic critical value, what we know that uh, uh, the, the answer is that uh, for, for, almost, uh, for almost all uh, S uh, smaller than C, there exists uh, uh, a closed magnetic geodesic. And uh, one application uh, using, this, uh, using this background, I, I showed that uh, uh, if, uh, if uh, S, uh, it's, uh, it's a level of the energy smaller uh, below the magnetic critical value, such that uh, the level of the energy admits uh, the, le the level of the energy as uh, uh, the rich magnetic curvature uh, positive, then uh, that level of the energy carries a contractible closed magnetic geodesic. The idea is that uh, basically with uh, a magnetic uh, with, with a magnetic uh, uh, Bonnemeyer's uh, uh, Bonnemeyer's argument, so we can show that if rich omega s uh, it's, uh, is strictly positive, uh, then uh, we can we can bound the length of magnetic geodesic uh, res with respect to the index of gamma, and this uh, will imply some. Uh, uh, th thanks to the, 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 this magnetic version of the Bonn and Myers, we can uh, recover uh, some palace mail condition uh, uh, for, uh, for the action and then prove the theorem, the existence of uncratable cross magnetic geodesic. Now, this theorem, together with the fact that, uh, to, together with the fact that nowhere vanishing magnetic system 
uh, are richly positively curved uh, for small level of the energy implies a remarkable corollary because now the corollary is the following. So if sigma is nowhere vanishing, uh, then uh, uh, sigma s carries uh, uh, a contractible close magnetic geodesic for, ev for every uh, s small. This is the first application. So the previous result was, uh, was given by Gizmund Gorel, which proves the same result when sigma is symplectic. Uh, another, another application uh, concern, uh, for example, the, 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 the magnetic flow without conjugate point. First of all, I, I have to introduce uh, the linearized problem. So now, gamma is uh, a magnetic geodesic, and I will denote by dot the, the relation uh, along the speed. Uh, and the magnetic, uh, the magnetic Jacobi equation takes this form, j dot dot, uh, plus uh, the Riemannian curvature operator evaluated on j gamma dot gamma dot, uh, and this is uh, the classical Jaco the classical Riemannian Jacobi equation. And then we 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 add terms of perturbation of the magnetic interaction, which are given by uh, nabla j omega applied to gamma dot minus omega applied to j dots. And uh, and now uh, we imagine that. Uh, uh, so we we met, we take p equal to gamma zero, and uh, and uh, and q uh, equal to gamma t for uh, for uh, a t different from zero, and we say that q q is conjugate uh, to to p if uh, there exists uh, a j uh, non-trivial solution. Uh, of uh, of star star such that uh, such that uh, uh, j at the time zero is equal to zero j dot at the time zero is uh, perpendicular to gamma dot and uh, j at the time t it's parallel to the speed okay so we say we say then the an orbit is without conjugate point if every point of the orbit uh, are not conjugate, and we say they, that a magnetic flow is without conjugate point if every orbit of the flow has not conjugate point. And uh, so a previous remark that as well as in the in the Riemannian case, uh, if uh, the magnetic sectional curvature is negative, then the magnetic flow at that level of the energy. Is without conjugate point. So the the converse generally doesn't hold. So if we have a flow without conjugate point, this does not imply that uh, the sectional magnetic curvature are negative. But nevertheless, uh, we the 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 best result in this direction uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's a celebrated theorem uh, in Riemannian geometry for the geodesic flow, which is the Hopf rigidity. Uh, which says that uh, if uh, if I have uh, uh, a geodesic flow on a surface uh, without conjugate point, then the integral of the Gaussian curvature over M is non-positive. And here we want to give uh, with this new setting, uh, with this new notion of magnetic curvature, the generalization to the magnetic case. So we are back into dimension, namely that, uh, namely that. Uh, uh, we b is the magnetic function, and the theorem states states the following. So now, if I have a magnetic flow without conjugate point, then the integral of the Gaussian magnetic curvature over S m is uh, non-positive, and we have the equality with zero if and only if either m is the two torus, g is flat, and b is equal to zero, or the genus of m is bigger than one the Gaussian curvature and the magnetic form are constant, and S is the magnetic critical value. And uh, the last comment is the following. So now, just by computing this integral, the linear term disappears because uh, we, when we integrate a one form over a sphere bundle, it's always zero. And we obtain this, 
by the gauss bonnet theorem. And then the first consequence is that uh, in, when in genus, G, in, in genus zero, we don't have magnetic flow with that conjugate point, as well as in the Riemannian case. So no conjugate point, no, no flow without conjugate point on the sphere, on the two sphere. In genus one, uh, we recovered the off rigidity and the previous result by Bialy. So the off rigidity says that the only uh, geodesic flow uh, on the torus without conjugate point is the one given by the flat metric. And the results by Bialy instead says that uh, the only magnetic flow on the two torus are given when B is equal to zero and the metric is flat. And uh, another particular uh, remark is uh, that uh, the, the dynamics uh, uh, of, uh, of an hyperbolic surfaces with the volume form as magnetic form and the magnetic critical value is characterized by the orocycle flow, which now can be understood as the new, uh, as the notion of magnetic flatness. And I think uh, my time, uh, uh, it's over. So I thank you. Thank you for the attention. Thank you very much. It, it was not over my time. I still had some time. Ah, okay. I don't know if you want to. No, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't. Uh, I, I, I didn't, didn't check carefully when you stopped. So I don't know. Sorry. Okay. Uh, are there any questions for Valerie? Yeah, there's I think there's a, in the Riemannian case, there's a theorem telling you that uh, if there are no conjugate, conjugate points, then the flow has to be integrable or something like that. Oh, yes. I, I, so, so, so this is a quite, uh, a quite new result. What I can say is that the, I cannot answer in, to the magnetic case of this question, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, uh, a generalization in higher dimension, it's, it's almost ready. So namely that uh, e even in the Riemannian case, the generalization of the Ops theorem is the, the Green theorem, which says that uh, uh, a geodesic flow without conjugate, if you have a geodesic flow, flow without conjugate point, then the integral of the scalar curvature over the base manifold is non-positive. And, uh, and uh, we can generalize this theorem by using the scalar magnetic curvature. And the interesting thing is that uh, the magnetic flatness uh, in higher dimension is characterized by a Kähler hyperbolic manifold when you take uh, the Kähler form as the magnetic form and always at the magnetic critical value. And in this case, uh, the, the dynamics is foliated by Eurocycle flow. So in particular, it's uni uniquely, uh, uniquely ergodic, uh, not periodic orbit. So it's, it's, um, it's very interesting, this notion of uh, magnetic flatness. Mm -hmm. And what happens with higher dimensional tori? So there is, uh, for metrics, there is this uh, result by Borag and Ivanov, right? That, uh, on the yeah, tor so... That, 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 that's correct. So in, 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 so in the two-dimensional case, uh, uh, it's very easy to deduce that on the two torus, the, the, the flow without conjugate point is the, is the flat one. Why in higher dimension, uh, this paper by Burago Ivanov, it's uh, used different method. And, um, and, uh, but in the magnetic setting, uh, uh, the paradox is that it's easier because basically, uh, basically, the, the idea is, uh, let me go back to the definition of sectional magnetic curvature. So basically, the, the idea is that uh, uh, when, uh, when, you, when you impose uh, this quantity evaluated over a section equal to zero, these linear terms uh, has to be zero because this uh, takes a positive and negative value. So if you want a level of the energy which is constantly zero, then this term has to be equal to zero. And this means that uh, nabla omega is equal to zero and uh, you, roughly speaking, uh, are a Kähler form. And then uh, when, when you want to impose the equality with this one and this one, so this uh, generally it's, uh, it's positive. So this has to be negative. And then the results follows. This is the sketch of idea. So the, the, the idea is that uh, by requiring the sectional magnetic curvature constant to zero for every section, 
you will deduce first that uh, you you are uh, you are on a on a uh, Keller manifold and uh, you use the Keller form as magnetic form and then the second step is so uh, is the fact that this uh, this operator is positive over section and then uh, your sectional magnetic curvature curvature has to be negative and then so you are in a hyperbolic Keller manifold that's a bit the idea so in, in so, in so 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 once again I, I probably I missed the conclusion so if you have a magnetic flow on n dimensional torus without conjugate points so what you conclude from this ah that the magnetic form is zero but this is a result by Bialy I think Bialy Bialy already proved that if you in, have in a magnetic new dimension in for tn in arbitrary mm -hmm. dimension mm -hmm. this is a result by Bialy. Yes. And then, uh, and Valerio? Yes. Uh, maybe you, you said that, but I missed it also, like uh, your, the, the S0 of your result, um, you know, below the, this S0, you have closed the uh, geodesics and uh, some curvature yes. assumption. And uh, this S0 and the money critical value, are you able to compare them or? I don't remember mm. if you said it. I, I, so what what I know so far that uh, uh, in the case of sectional magnetic curvature uh, s zero it's always uh, smaller than the magnetic critical value, and this mm -hmm. is uh, this is uh, if you if you want uh, when you think about Riemannian geometry when you have a manifold uh, with section with positive sectional curvature uh, you and uh, the dimension it's even uh, there is no minimizer. No, no, no close geodesic are minimizer. You can, mm -hmm. the index is always at least one. And I think uh, you use a Klingenberg technique. I think it's called Klingenberg technique. And so you, you see, since uh, uh, above the magnetic critical value, you find a minimal, uh, uh, a minimal point in each non-trivial homotopy class, uh, you already know that uh, this uh, as zero, uh, it's smaller than C. In the case mm. of Ricci, I don't know. I don't know. I I, I assume that it's uh, it's smaller than the magnetic critical value, but I can I I cannot prove it right now, not yet. But I assume okay. that it's uh, it's below the magnetic critical value. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yes. Any other question? Okay, so I think we can thank Valerio again. Thank you very much, Valerio. Thank you.